So what makes more money over the border now, drugs or people? What's his job exactly? At what age is a people? He's asking, well, how can a parent give up their child just to anybody and let their child go alone? What is the hardest part of the job? What kind of money is in it? What's up with sex trafficking right now? He says what all these bracelets here put on the on the people so they could they're able to track them where they're headed to where they're going down the pipeline if they could kill you they could beat you they charge you a fine what they're trying to tell these people you're not gonna do anything without my permission he says that Clear the police yes. are mixed up with the cartels <laughs> Good afternoon, guys. Well, I got quite a video coming to you in just a couple minutes time. I'm gonna meet someone that works independently as a contractor under a cartel. And if I seem a bit relaxed, it's because we were going to do it in Mexico, and now we're doing it here in McAllen. I have to have my phone shut off. We have to meet in a public place. And what are we gonna get into? Well, it's not just happening below the border here. Human trafficking is happening in the States. And so when migrants come over, there's a whole network, there's a whole business model, there's a whole industry, and that's what we're gonna learn about very soon. And I'm gonna see how far, I don't wanna press boundaries, but I'm gonna see how much information I can get about this, let's call it industry, that really none of us know about. Should be interesting. Okay, let's do this. I was driven to a location unknown to me. My phone was shut off. The name I called the trafficker, Tony, is not his real name. His face was covered and his voice altered for this video. Here we are. And Raul, he's gonna translate. And this is Tony. And I think we just wanna start it off by like, what does is, what is Tony do exactly? Yeah, this is exactly to Tony. Okay, basically what he's saying, his job is he's an in independent, you could say contractor uh -huh. that gets paid by by the cartel to bring people. They bring people across into into Texas. Once they get to their destination, Houston, it's up to them where they go or what they do. Okay, so but he he, well, he also said that he works very different from everybody else. He does get paid for what he does. Okay. He says, I, I, I do it to help out people out, even though I do get paid. Uh, and and I, my job is to get them to wherever they're trying to go. Who are, who are his clients right now? Más o menos, ¿quién es tu cliente ahorita? Como gente de donde? Yo trabajo, prefiero trabajar más con mexicanos y quitarte el trabajo que tú hiciste. Okay. Basically, what he's saying is that he prefers to work with uh, his with with Mexicans mm -hmm. instead of people from other countries. Okay. And the reason why he prefers to work with them, with Mexicans that are trying to come into the United States instead of people from other countries, is for the simple reason that a lot of times uh, they they don't pay mm -hmm. or they have problems uh, with them once mm -hmm. they get to their final destination and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he prefers to work with uh, Mexicans or people from Mexico. Okay, so when I, can you explain the term human trafficker? Because I think of something, uh, I think of something terrible, right? Like, it's, is it basically just you, you take money from some, someone's paying you directly and you're getting them from point A to point B. Is that, is that the story or? Como exactamente jala tu trabajo? Mira, el punto A empieza en México. Everything starts in Mexico. Okay. El punto B es de aquí. The uh, point B would be here in the valley. Uh, the, the, valley. the valley being right over the Rio Grande yes. River, McAllen, Texas. Southern, southern tip of Texas. Okay. Basically, he could work either here in the valley or work in the Laredo area. Even though it might belong to somebody else, since he's an independent contractor, he, he could work for anybody with any different cartel or whoever's willing to pay him to do something. So the, car, the cartel contracts him? Yes. Okay. And they say, Tony, we need... What, like one person, a van of people? How does it, how does this work? Exactamente, cuando te hablan, como te dicen, necesito una persona. Es de cinco personas a ocho personas, no puedo. He rather, he rather do from five to eight people at a time. He does not like doing a bunch of people at one time. That way he doesn't get heat in the long run. Or get, you know what, too much, draw too much attention. 
where they start watching him, whether it's the, the government from here or the government from Mexico mm. or, or just somebody in general. So most people think when they think trafficking, at least I did, I thought it, it only happened mostly below the border. But you, is, does Tony say there's a lot going on in, in the U.S. right now? Cuando él pensó de, de gente moviendo... Uh, las personas que ahorita están llegando... Okay. He's saying he's saying that he cannot judge anybody for wanting to come to the United States. Okay. But all these people that are coming from all these other countries to the United States, yep. they're drawing they're drawing attention to him and his job. They're drawing heat to him and his job. Because they're they're creating too much attention, for example, with the media, with the mm -hmm. the Mexican military, the United States military, the 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 just border patrol in general. So like I said, uh, the, the, he can't judge anyone. They could come over here because uh, they're being allowed to. But like I said, it, it does make his job harder. What's his job exactly? Does he drive, a, he picks up people in one location, drives them himself to the end point? Or? To through, okay, basically what he's saying, his job is to transport people. Once they get off the river, whoever's holding them off the river, and there's no more border patrol or anybody else around, he'll pick them up. He'll bring them back to whatever location. Once he brings them to the location, he'll feed them, give them clothing, whatever they need. Meanwhile, he's waiting for the other transportation to get to pick up these people, whether it's to take them to Laredo, mm -hmm. from Laredo they go up north, or if it's to take them here in the valley, uh, whether it's just take them up north directly from whatever location they're at. And that's it. Basically, okay. he's the middleman between the, between the valley and the rest of the United States. What ages of people? All ages or? Como la gente que tiene, más o menos que le da tiene. La gente puede llegar de... His basically the age they deal with is from 16 to maybe about 60, 70 years old. He has gotten old people before. Uh, he has gotten sick people before and they have gotten to their destination. Whether... So, but his his thing is, is not back to the, the flux that's happening right now with, with the unaccompanied minors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because as as we've discussed, those get those roam freely after they get to border patrol. Yeah. So these are the other people that don't want to get caught. Yeah. They because come they're been they're Mexicans. Yes. Right now there's a policy other than Mexicans can be let into yes. asylum. Right, right now there's a hundred day uh, policy set by Biden when he took over, mm -hmm. saying a hundred, for our first hundred days is no deportation for um, other than Mexicans uh, OTMs for other than Mexicans. So like I said, his job is to get those Mexicans that want to come in. So this policy is good for his business right now? In a way, yes, but like he said, it creates the the, the tension where you have more people, more equipment, right, more everything right. that hinders him from doing his job. Gotcha, gotcha. So why does he do it? Por qué le haces? No, necesidad de trabajo, necesidad y llevando mucha gente. He says that he does it for the necessity. He, it's, it's a job to him. Because there's a huge influx the last few months, what, is, what does he think about that? Como I, What's going I've on at the border? Tanto gente en estos meses. What he's saying is that, you know what, he's no one to judge. That, like he said, people could come to the United States, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, they're saying they're fleeing their country because of violence and all this stuff. What, if they're fleeing their, their, their country due to violence, He's asking, well, how can a parent give up their child just to anybody and let their child go alone mm. and make their journey from South America to the United States? He's saying, you're taking the risk of something happening to your child, whether they're being kidnapped, raped, or, yeah. or something happened to them, drowning in the river or something, because you don't know. So how can people use that, that excuse, say, hey, I'm leaving my country, or I'm doing this for this reason? Uh -huh. um, so does, does Tony have any kids? Ten niños? He has five kids. Okay. And what does he think about the border and, and customs protection right now? ¿Qué piensa de 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 migración y? Okay. What he's saying, you know what? That he praises Border Patrol and everybody for doing their job. They're doing an excellent job. That, that's coming from him. He, li he likes them. Yes, he has nothing against them. You know what they're doing? They're, they're doing their job. They're not his enemy in they're, any They're way. not his enemies. Huh. So he's saying they're doing a great job and everything, but at the end of the day, it's not only Border Patrol's problem. These people that are coming to the United States, OTMs, other than Mexican, 
they're causing problems all throughout their country while traveling this way, uh -huh. causing problems all through Mexico. And he's glad that the United States had stopped those people from coming this way, which is back with the prior, though, prior administration. Even though his business model is taking migrants and, and the answer, moving them into the, the States. The answer to that is yes. And the reason why it's yes to that is because, like he said, his main, his main thing is to bring Mexicans into the United States or Mexican people okay. into the United States. Okay, gotcha. We can turn around, guys. We'll just go back. Uh, all right. <laughs> Take two. I'll just be over here. So, what is um, what is the hardest part of the job? The hardest job he's done in his job is actually walking the people past the checkpoint through the brush and stuff like that. He's done the smuggling part also. He's done different parts of this uh, mm -hmm. this job that he does. What kind of what kind of money is in it? As far as what they pay or what he gets paid? Yeah, if if he can disclose or just give us a rough estimate my, my, of what's, pos what's but, possible. Well, what part though? What what they pay them or what they pay him? Both. I would like okay. both. Más o menos cuánto cobra? Es que hay diferentes precios. Hay unos que te cobran llegando, hay otros que te cobran otros que cobran mil doscientos dólares. Okay, right, right, right. right now what what they're charging is probably half of what everybody else is charging. Normally, char they, cr they charge around 3000 to cross just the river itself. They're charging about 1500 They're charging half the price of what everybody else is charging. Why? ¿Por qué están cobrando tan barato? Porque nosotros tenemos, ya llegas a Houston, se te va a cobrar cinco mil dólares. Okay, it's because it's, it's they're charging uh, by, like I said, so much to cross the river, so much to charge, uh, they're charging so much to go from here to to Laredo, so much from Laredo to Houston, for example. Mm -hmm. so they charge it in pieces. That's the reason why just 1,500 is just across the river. How does how does a Mexican family that doesn't have much money afford all, all of this? Their oh. family in the state sending or they la know gente people? Puede pagar esto si sí, no okay, what he's saying that he can't tell you for sure what people do, whether they sell their stuff or whatever, that's okay. something he can't answer. What he is saying is how they charge by parts, they don't give the whole money up front. Okay. They're giving their word saying, you know what, we'll get you from here to here, here to here, here to here. Los que ponen el dinero son los familiares del norte. The families, of, the families from up north are usually the ones who put in the money for the people that are in Mexico trying to come this way. Okay. Usually the people that, that, are, that are in transit, you can put it that way, the people that are in transit, they usually carry a few dollars on them with them for whatever they might want or need along the way. Okay. What a, does um does he does he think there's anything uh, wrong with what he does or does he feel like he's doing a good thing for people? Tú crees que está algo mal con Yo creo que estoy haciendo algo bueno, pero te voy a secuestrar. He said he says him he's doing it to help out people. Here in the United States, we might look at him as doing something wrong because he is receiving money. Okay. He went, if I, don't, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it either way. Okay. He went, the thing is, you know what, going through me, it's a lot cheaper than going through someone else. Plus, they're, they're actually going to do the job and do what, what they tell you they're going to do. Other people might uh, kidnap you or something, hold you for ransom. They don't do that kind of stuff. What's up with sex trafficking right now? He says he can't talk and reference okay. that because he okay. does not do that stuff so he so since he's in the in the business he knows what's going on what right now like what percentage of people coming over are treated in a good way and what percentage of people over are getting into like terrible situations like sex trafficking or in, in tu opinion de la gente que cruza pa acá He's heard of before of uh, sto different stories and stuff. He could only tell you about stories he's heard, not anything they've done, but where someone said, you know what, we'll, we'll take you across and stuff. They charge X amount of dollars. They wound up raping those females or kids or whoever was there, and then they just wound up leaving them in the middle of the brush somewhere. That was it. So there are stories of stuff that happens and stuff, but he's saying, you know what, with him and his crew and his people, they don't, they don't do that kind of stuff. Okay. Because at the end of the day, that's what brings them money. Their, their families, they, you know what? These people could do it. These people could help you out. These people could bring you in. Right. They're cheaper or whatever. Okay, what were, okay, what were the 
you didn't tell me because I told you to tell me on camera. When we got out of the car, you showed me these uh, bracelets, anklet mm -hmm. things, or uh, ankle bracelet things. Actually, there's some bracelets here. I'll have him explain yeah. what they are. Yeah, what are they? Basically, these are bracelets that they put on the illegal aliens. They're different colors. There's yellow ones, there's gold ones, there's red ones, there's blue ones. Every organization has their own bracelet uh -huh. and what it stands for. Okay. Now I'll let him explain what it's for. ¿Pa qué son estos y qué se significa estos? Estos sirven para... He says what all these bracelets here put on the, on the people. That they mean something. They all have a number. I okay. can't show you that number because they don't know where it came from. Yep. That number is written basically in a log with all that, that immigrants information and stuff. So they're they able to track them where they're headed to, where they're going down the pipeline and they stuff. Ha the migrants have to keep that on, on them at all times? Yes. What's what happening, basically, once the people get to Mexico, they'll say, I guess, but you're talking about the other people that... Who can speak? Habla el encargado. Okay. Like, well, a, a smuggler in Mexico. They uh -huh. brought somebody to Reynosa, for example. Okay, Reynosa yeah. is the city the right city below right, the border. Yes, it's, yep. a, it's a border town right here, right across from McAllen Mission, yep. Far. So what happens, they got to call and say, you know what, I got five people. I need to bring them down to the river so we can cross them into the United States. So from there, después que hablan a ustedes, ¿qué pasa? Okay, what happens, they send somebody to, to meet up with that person, that smuggler. That way they could be able to pay what they're going to pay to to put them or to, to give them attention or whatever uh -huh. to to acknowledge that they want to move somebody across. ¿Qué más? Esto funciona the way they were doing it, they were, they were giving you basically a free pass. They like they smuggled uh, on a Mexican, a Mexican resident into the, into the United States. Okay. If they got caught, they get thrown back. As long as they had this bracelet on, like, the, and the number coincides with with their books and stuff, they were able to get another chance for free. He didn't think they're doing that anymore. Now, if you get caught, they're gonna recharge you again, whatever they're charging you to to bring you across again. Mm. Before they used to give you basically an insurance policy saying, hey, you got another free shot. If you get caught, you got another free shot. Now, the way he thinks it is that you don't. Okay, basically, what this says is that you've already reported to somebody in Mexico saying, you know what, I'm, I'm here and uh -huh. I'm trying to get to the United States. So once they put this on you, that means like, you're already in the logbooks basically mm -hmm. showing that you've already reported to somebody. If you if you are from another, somewhere else and you're here in Reynosa, for example, and you don't have this bracelet, there could be different options that might happen to you. They could kill you. They could beat you. They who, could charge you a fine. Who, who's gonna kill and beat? The cartel. What what just there's a, how many cartels are there? Well, there's different ones, but it, it depends who catches you. Okay. So, say, say like for example, I'm I'm from Jalisco, Mexico, for example. Mm -hmm. I come to Reynosa. I'm in Reynosa. And I'm trying to get to the United States. Yeah. I'm trying to do it on my own. Yeah. I guess that's why no one does it on their own. The, the, the proper way, they're supposed to report to somebody, whichever cartel or whoever, they report to somebody. Like I said, they're logged in, they're, all their information is put in so they're able to know what's what. In this case, like I said, if I tell like I'm from, uh, I'm from Jalisco and I'm in Reynosa, I don't have this bracelet on. Yeah. They're going to say, who are you? Why are you here? They're going to question you and stuff. And like mm -hmm. I said, from there they could fine you mm -hmm. for you know what we're gonna fine you so they might pick you up and hold you hostage until that fine is paid mm -hmm. or they might beat you or something or like you said worst the case scenario they might kill you because at the end of the day what they're trying to tell these people you're not gonna do anything without my permission you can't do anything coming into this city mm -hmm. because you got to go through somebody to right. be able to come into the United States I guess that answers the question from the other day why they don't come directly and, and walk on the bridge and say, I'm right here right. to seek asylum. They have to go through a process and it has to be recognized through the, through the different cartels. Do you think, I don't want to go too, too long in this, but cartels are intertwined with police forces in different uh, regions of Mexico or that's hard to say? Okay. Piensas que los carteles están mixed, o los policías de México están mixtados con los carteles y todo eso? Sí. He says so, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. He says that Clear the police yes. are mixed up with the cartels because they, they wind up paying them off to look the other way or to right. do stuff for them. So what makes more money over the border now, drugs or people? Crossing people wow. makes more money. 
Wow, so that's that's what people, there's more competition to get people over than drugs over. Más o menos, ¿cuánto cobra? Ok, de Renault a Houston, ¿cuánto? Uh, nosotros podemos cobrar que... Uh, no, okay. no, no, I asked him how much from Jalisco, Mexico, for example, uh -huh. to Houston. Yep. He says he can't answer that question because he covers from Renosa to Houston. Renosa to Houston, you, you're going to pay a total of about 9,600. Whoa. Just from Renosa to Houston. But that's paid in parts. Like yeah. I said, to cross the river so much, from uh, here to Laredo so much, from Laredo to Houston, another amount or whatever. Are there any times the cartels like let someone in, go without all the money and then they they sort of like have to make payments it, once it, they get to the States? Rumores. I'm telling you, you heard rumors. Yeah. Es escuchar rumores. Yo te puedo asegurar de que esas personas... He says very few people that will actually let you go without paying your full money at the final destination. Okay. You know, for the simple reason, it's happened to him before where, you know what, the promise to pay and, and they don't get paid. So that's the reason why by the time you get to your final destination, before they release you, you're going to pay up what you owe. Okay. Uh, So guys, I got one uh, one last question. Okay. We'll, we'll stand out of the wind here. What does Tony have to say about his profession? Is there anything he wants the world to know exactly about him or his profession? Or algo que quiere decir de tu trabajo o ilegales, pero no siempre hay este trabajo, pero no todos somos iguales. He's trying to say that you know what? At the end of the day, we're not all the same. Yes, I smuggle people. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm not out doing something wrong like other people might be doing as okay. far as raping people, selling people, stuff like that. So not everybody's the same. He doesn't want to be classified as everybody else. You know what? He's not smuggling kids. Okay. He's not doing stuff like that that he's not supposed to. He's just trying to help somebody come into the United States because they want to come in for whatever reason, a better life or whatever the reason might be. Okay. Well, muchas gracias por eso. Por eso. Okay. All right. Guys, another, another view of the border region here between US and Mexico. It's complicated. There are a lot of moving parts and I'm trying to deliver you as many of them as I can. It's getting dark. Thanks you guys. Thank you. Thanks for the translation. No problem. And thanks Tony for, for being on camera and telling your story. Thank you. Okay. All right, that was quite interesting and a first for me. I'm sure a first for most of you. And the point I do this, the point, the reason why I'm doing this is to bring you into a different perspective, a world that you would normally not get into. And I'm not telling you to agree or disagree. Uh, I am very much against illegal immigration. I'm not supporting it here. Uh, what I am trying to do is show you that this is a, a very complicated topic with a lot of moving parts. And if you watch my full series, I'm trying to hit it from all different angles an interesting interesting thing about tony is you know i'm thinking uh trafficker so what comes to mind sex trafficker guy with guns that likes to kill people and you know i do believe you never know what goes up what what someone is is really doing behind the scenes but i i do believe that he is moving people from point a to point b and that's his business and he almost even had like a, a soft side to him in the car. Uh, you know, and at first I was nervous. I was like, you know, how often you hang out with traffickers? And you know, what is this gonna be like? And it and it was it was actually quite surprisingly normal, all of it. And the deeper I go into this rabbit hole, this border migration rabbit hole, the more confusing and complicated and difficult it gets. You know, you would need years down here to really understand what's going on. But that's just a little taster, a little teaser. And hopefully it opens a discussion. It opens a different way of thinking, perhaps. I know this is triggering content. There's no way around that. It's such a hot topic. I want to thank the sponsorship of this video, Cuts. This t-shirt company, uh, we found each other. It's amazing because I was looking for t-shirts for like two years, a good one, a good one that doesn't wear out quickly, a good one where the neck stays together and breathes well and takes this right now Texas heat that I'm in. I have to iron it, it's legit. Get one of these if you want a good quality 
t-shirt. I got a link below, a discount of 15%. So if you click on my link, you get 15% off. Cuts t-shirts, they also make sweatshirts and a few other things. Thanks for watching this video. If this topic, if you made it this far, you're probably into this topic. So watch the other ones. Watch the other ones from the series about the border. I got two more days here and I got three more videos to make. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. It's my head feels like it's going to explode a bit because of the amount of information, new information 